20s and I actually wanted to play around with this thing and I'm glad I did because I got some great tips, information, and some advice for y'all if you're going to build one. But first I'm going to get y'all up here and show you how I need another wire nut and I'm gonna check this out real good and then we'll turn it on. Okay guys, I'm glad I stopped, turned the camera off and double checked this before I plugged it up. I think I was telling y'all right, but even though I was telling y'all right, I didn't get it in the right slide on the back of this. So what it is, Number one, wire goes to your hot on your power supply cord or wherever you're getting your power to it. Number two, goes to the neutral on the power supply cord and to the two neutrals or grounds, if you want to rather call them grounds, on your light bulb sockets. Number three and four is your little sensor wire. Number five, it's nothing more than a jumper wire between five and one, which I just run mine, hooked it together down here where one hooks to my power cord. So five and one goes to the height on the power cord. And then number six goes to the hot wire on your lamp bulbs. The reason I got in the wrong hole, guys, cause it's got seven and eight. And seven and eight has to do with cooling because you can use these temperature controls for different things or like on ice boxes and refrigerators, I assume. But doing this project, we ain't using seven and eight. That's for hooking up something to cool. So we, we hooking up on the hot six, five and six. Anyway, we just ain't fooled with seven and eight. So I got it plugged up and you see it come on. Now the next task is, and I'm gonna stop the camera for this again too, cause I gotta get the manual to figure out how to set this. Cause I want this, I'm gonna, for testing purposes, I'm gonna set it for 99 degrees. And then I'll tell y'all how you set this. Cause you can set your temperature but then it's got to where just say when your temperature starts falling, you can set it to where you say I want it to fall one degree and then turn back on or fall two degrees and then turn back on. Anyway, once I figure that out, I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So after this done been running about an hour and everything's got equalized out, I got three thermometers in there, three different kinds. That one says 99.5. The one on the back, I would say a mercury style, but I don't think they use mercury no more. Close as I can read it, I would say it said 99.5, we it ain't dead on 100. And that one right there, the little round one, as close as you can read it, I'm saying them three is reading the same. And this is reading 100 right now. But what I do have, I got it set on 101. So to get to 101 right here, them reads about 100, a little over 100 when this kicks off. And I got a one degree difference in it. So it can go down from 101 back to 100 and it kicks back on. It goes back to 101 and kicks off. See, when it went to 101 just then, it just kicked off. Fan still runs. The fan's running. I got it running on wide open to do what I want to do to suck that air through that pipe on the back and circulate it. So I'm going to leave this sitting here all night. And I think I done collected about 25 eggs. We're going to bring in here tomorrow and put in the basket in the bottom. Now, I don't know that I'm going to be able to use three baskets after I fix this for three baskets. I may only be able to use two baskets because the top one may get too warm up there that close to the fan. 
but still a two basket incubator. That's way more quills than chickens I'm gonna hatch at one time, I can tell you that. So I'll see y'all tomorrow when we start putting some eggs in here. All right guys, I'm back and it's actually about three days later this time. And the reason it's so much later cause our nights dropped down into the upper 20s. And I actually wanted to play around with this thing and I'm glad I did cause I got some great tips, information, and some advice for y'all if you're going to build one. But first, I'm going to get y'all up here and show you how the temperature ink bird here, how you set it and stuff, because I forgot to do that the other day. So I'm going to get y'all up here where you zoomed in on there. Now, again, this is the ink bird ITC-1000F. I'll leave a link in the description below this video where you can purchase this. I remember right it was around 20 bucks now to set it you got four buttons you got a power button a button with an s on it an up air and a down air so you want to hit the s button and hold it and first thing's gonna come up is a ts that's for your temperature setting hit your air up and it changes to D, S, hit it again, P, T, hit it again, C, A, hit it again, C, F. Now we're going to go back to T, S. T, S is his temperature setting. You would hit, while it's on there, hit set. Then you go up or down or change it. I got mine set on 100. So I'm going to hit S again. Now I'm going to go to D, S which is the different set value. Hit the S again, and I got mine for one degrees. Hit the S again, it goes back. Now I'm gonna stop right here. The different set value is like I got my temperature set on 100 degrees with one degree difference. That means it, when it gets to 100, it goes off. And when the temperature drops down to 99, it comes back on. And I'm playing around with this, and this is something we're going to talk about in a little bit. But when your temperature, you say it's set on 100 right now, when that light bulb goes off, that light bulb is still putting off a little heat. So it sometimes it'll rise. It don't, ain't never rose over one degree, though. But it'll rise up a little bit before it starts falling back down. When it gets to 99, it comes back on. All right, so now I'm going to go back hold my s down and we're gonna go to what we do d5 pt is your compressor delay i have mine set on zero because that's something to do if you got a for cooling side of it you want to delay between when the heat kicks on and your cool kicks on so we ain't using it so it's set on zero and you see it changes back real quick so I got to keep going back to it, holding my S down. And then we'll go to CA, which again has to do with your refrigeration side, calibration, the difference in it and the heating side. I just leave it on zero. And then the last setting is CF, which is, you can change from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Of course, I got it on Fahrenheit. And when you let off the buttons, you wait a few seconds and it'll go back to your temperature. So the instructions that came with this is pretty straightforward. So guys, some of the things I learned about fooling with this the last few days and it being extremely cold at night, is one of the tips I want to give you is don't think a hotter light bulb or a hotter heat supply is better. Y'all remember I added the second light bulb in there because I wanted a fast recovery when I opened my door. It could come back up, which is a good thing. Made sense to me. But when I started doing my test, I put my two trays in there. And I got thinking after I played with it a while, I said, well, I need to sit 
check it with some water in the bowl in the bottom and make sure my humidity is going to get up high enough. So when it comes to the what we call the lockdown, day 14, or most of the time I do mine on day 15, you want to raise your humidity up. I like getting mine around 55, 60%. Well, I put water in the bowl and put it in the bottom there, and lo and behold, temperature is all doing good. Two thermometers in there, that thermometer, everything's working good. Couldn't ever get no humidity to come up. So I put a bigger bowl of water in there. Still couldn't get no humidity. Well, after doing a little thinking, researching, what it is, two light bulbs burning in there was so hot, it's burning the humidity out of the air. That's one thing. The second thing is that fan is a computer fan. The good thing is, is when I bought that, I was showing y'all earlier, I got one with the control knob on it where you can turn it up or down. And it's a very good thing I did. Because an incubator fan is a slow speed fan that don't push many cubic feet per minute air. Well, with the two bulbs burning as hot as it is, and the fan was pushing more air than it needed, it was keeping the humidity burn out of the air. So, how I done that, I turned my fan all the way down, and sure enough, my humidity, it ain't going to immediately jump. That's one thing when you start doing this. Ain't nothing going to change like that. You got to give it time to, like an hour between each thing you do to see what's happening. But my humidity started coming up but it still wouldn't get up there to 55 or 60. Well, the next thing I've done, as y'all see up at the top now, I put another little bitty shelf and put my bowl of water right under the fan there. That helped. But the biggest thing I've done is i undone, right now y'all see both light bulbs is burning. That's cause it's cold today. Last night was 28 degrees and it get 28 in this shed here. And the day ain't been over 50. So with it like that, using two light bulbs is working fine. But on them warm days or when I get the heater on in here and I got it up to like 70 degrees, again, my humidity will start dropping. So what I did to fix that, I got a switch back here on this one light bulb. You just seen me turn it off. Actually, I ain't got the switch on the wire yet, but I just unwired it and got it to where I can hook it back and forth. But I'm going to put a little lamp switch on there. That way, when I need open my door and do something and shut my doors, I can reach back there and turn that second light bulb, bulb on, get the temperature back up real quick, and then turn that second light bulb off. And then that one light bulb is working on the timer. And that's, I found, has been doing perfect. Once I've done that, got my fan turned all the way down, just barely circulating there. Got my water tray up there. Now you can see the humidity is in there. It's 55%. Another thing you can do, on, especially on cold nights, is I got two bottles of water, which I could put three in the bottom. And after that water gets to 100 degrees, it keeps it, you know, balanced out in there. It helps hold the, hold the temperature without big changes. So, that's my three main tips. If you order a computer fan, you do need to get the one with the speed controller on it so you can slow it down because it's going to push more air than you need for an incubator unless you're building a really big incubator. Or you can buy incubator fans. They sell them too, which I like this one being adjustable. Because I could, that gives me an allowance to where whatever size incubator I built, I can turn it up or down to get it to work out with that, that fan. Again, don't think by putting a bigger, hotter bulb in there is going to be your answer because it burns the humidity out and won't let you get your humidity up. Now, I know earlier in my video, I was talking about turning the eggs, that I'm not that concerned about turning them. Guys, it ain't that I don't believe in turning the eggs helps. What it is with me, I'm getting so many eggs, 
<laughs> that I don't care if I don't get to like 50% hatch rate. The more important thing than turning the eggs is keeping that temperature. As, as long as I can keep this, I'm, you shoot for 99.5 on quails. But you do have a little wind and it's like 97 degrees to 103 degrees. You don't want to go below that. You don't want to go above it for any amount of time at all. So that's been working out perfect. Like I said, cause when, the, when this goes up to 100, the fan cuts off, but sometimes it'll creep up. The temperature will creep up just a little bit before it starts falling because you still got the heat off your light bulb that your fan's blowing on there. So your temperature is your most important thing. And then, because if your temperature is too low, your quails is going to not hatch on, you should have maybe a few quails hatching on day 17. Day 18 is when the majority of them are to hatch, and then you might get a scraggler on 19 and 20. But if you got your quail eggs in there, and I'm speaking quail eggs because that's what I'm doing the most of, if you got your quail eggs in there and you get a hatch and they all more of them starts hatching on 17 or day 16, that means your temperature is running too hot in your incubator. If you get most of your hatch on day 19 and 20 is your biggest hat trick, that means your temperature is running too low in there, no matter what that thermometer says, that your temperature is too low. The other thing is the humidity. Here in Louisiana, the humidity is usually, on average, 20 30%. So when I put eggs in there, I don't put no water in here until about day 14 or 15. Or not this one I ain't used, but my other incub little incubators. On day 14, when I put them in lockdown, or usually I do it day 15 that morning, I put the water in my incubator to get my humidity up there, like I said, I like shooting from 55, but anywhere from 55 to 65, because you need your humidity on them last days for them birds to hatch, because if you ain't got enough humidity in there, they can't break themselves out of the shell, and then if they do get themselves broke out, they don't work so hard, a lot of times they'll die. But on the other flip side of that, if you get that humidity too high and you up there 80 and 90 percent, then birds are drowned inside your eggs. So your humidity and your temperature is way more important than making sure them eggs is turned perfect. You do want to turn your eggs, but doing them with your hand, even if you do it once a day or twice a day is sufficient enough. Now, the other thing that I didn't show y'all, which I'm gonna have to take the camera and go around back because my cord's short here and I got water in there so I can't turn it around. You got to have a vent hole. Now the vent hole you can keep closed during your first 14 days or even 15 days. But anyway, on day 14 or 15, I open my vent hole because when your eggs, cause when your egg starts hatching, you got to have oxygen in there because your eggs put off some type of gases when they're hatching and closed up in a little space like that at 100 degrees, they got to have fresh air. And it don't take but just a small hole. And I'm going to show y'all how I rig my hole up on this where I can adjust it and close it real simple. So let's take a look at that. So as y'all can see on my return bite right here, right now I got it closed. But I drilled two holes in there. That's about three sixteenths each holes. But I cut a piece of this PVC in half so it just clips on there. See, if I only want one hole open, I can just do it like that. If I want both of them open, just open it. If I want it covered like I do now, you just cover it. But you got to have a vent hole when it comes hatching time for them birds to get some fresh oxygen. Again, that's a look how mine's on top, and it'll probably stay that way. I'll probably never put a junction box. I got them neatly tied up. The box is velcroed down. The fan controller there is velcroed down. 
That's what it looks like inside. Like I said, it works better with my water bowl up top. And everything has been doing fine. Now, the last two nights, last night was 28 degrees. Night before last was 30 degrees. The first night I didn't cover this. And my temperature was dropping a little too fast. It, it was almost staying on steady, but it, it would go off and come right back on. I stayed out, come out here late at night, very early in the morning before daylight, playing with this thing. Last night, I covered it with a blanket, which, you know, 28 degrees, I, even 40 degrees, it's better to cover it if it's out in the shed like this. It ain't con controlled at a good, decent temperature. But other than that, guys, I ain't got no other, that's all I know to tell y'all, tips and advice. The main thing is that fan. You need one that you can turn down real low. You heat source light bulb or whatever don't do like me thinking the hotter it is the better to be for recovery time because then you got to think about the humidity it burns the humidity out of there so there's a flip side to everything so right now probably in the morning what i'm gonna do for this video guys because uh, i'm wanting to get this video done and complete it i got eggs in my i got a nature right incubator in there and i think it's got 25 quail eggs in it maybe 30 and it's got the little turner in it well here i think tomorrow is going to be day 14 time to take them out of the turner and what you call put them in lockdown so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna go on and put them in here and probably put them in the bottom tray and then as i start collecting eggs i'm gonna put them in the top tray and then we'll get some eggs hatched. I'm gonna show y'all, I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show me putting the eggs in here. And then I probably ain't gonna video no more until it comes hatching day, cause all I'm gonna be doing is just watching it and turning my, well, I ain't gonna be turning them eggs. They, they gonna be in lockdown mode where they don't need turn no more. But as I put eggs in there every day, when I put eggs in here, I collect them in the morning and in the evening. Every time I open to put eggs in there, I just kind of give the other ones a little roll with my hand. So, now I see y'all want to start putting eggs in here. Hey guys so i'm back and it's a few days i don't know like three or four more days later i've been playing with this thing i wanted to make sure everything was just right and plus i've done some more modifications i'll show y'all in a moment but what i got here i just put 35 eggs that's been in my neutral right 360 and they were put in there on february the 10th today is february the 21st so they need to go in lockdown on February the 24th. So therefore, I'm going to have three days that I'm going to reach in there once in the morning and once in the evening and just kind of give them a roll around. And guys, that one basket there, I don't know. I put 35 eggs in there, and I, I'm thinking it'd hold 50 eggs in that one basket. So I'm going to start at this point with these eggs. And I'm not going to add any more eggs because what I'm doing, I collected enough eggs to fill the Nutri-Rite back up. Brought these out here, filled the Nutri-Rite back up. And as they turn in, once I get enough to fill it up again, I'll bring them in here and put them in here. Now, I know what I said earlier in this video that I was talking about bringing eggs and putting them in here every day. But after I got to thinking about that, well, I, I wasn't thinking what it is, because that won't work. So when you go into lockdown mode, you need to bring your humidity up higher than it is when it's in incubation mode. 
So I can't keep the humidity up at all times with them eggs. I don't think that would help on the hatching. So I know some of you caught that earlier in the video. So now my plans is, is when I collect enough to fill the Nutrite, put them in there, let them be self-turning and stuff. When I get enough to fill the Nutrite back up, take the ones that's in there, bring them out here, and I just open these up and turn them by hand at least twice a day until lockdown day. So we should be having some eggs hatching here in the next few days. Now, one of the things I want to show y'all that I come up with during the time of not videoing is the water bowl. You'll know I was telling you I put it up top. Well, instead of having to open that up and put water in it, I put me a spout right here on the side, and I get y'all up here close enough here in a moment to show you. Instead of having to get this water bowl out of here and pour water in it, I put me a spout in here, and that's made out of half-inch PVC, and it's just a little cap right here. Also, I had a little funnel, and I made me a little holder here, and that's just a PVC cap silicone to the top just to hold my little funnel. And it'll sit in there. And I can just pour my water in there as I need to keep it filled. Now, the good thing about this is when you go in lockdown mode, you know I was saying you needed to keep your vent open. Well, this serves as the vent too. Because the pipe don't run down in the water in the inside. So I can just leave the cap off come lockdown day. And it's got its vent. Plus, I can add water in there as I need water. Well, I hadn't opened the door. So, I thought that was a pretty good little idea I come up with. Also, I got my switch. Got it installed to where I can turn the second light bulb on on them cooler nights. Or if I open the door and been fooling with it and it cools down, I can turn the second light bulb on or warm it back up real quick. Right now, we're just running on one light bulb because the temperature has been in the 70s, so it's, everything's been working fine. So other than adding my switch on there and adding me a way I can add water where I had to open it and take time to pull the bowl out and pour water in it, that's all I've done other than watch the temperatures. And for it's been running, I think, four days since I last seen y'all. In the highest temperature, actually, I got another thermostat hygrometer here. I had this one out in my greenhouse. What I liked about it, it shows the high and the low. So I brought it in here and put it in there. So for the last four days, the high has been 101 and the low is 98. Because like I said, you ain't going to keep this perfect at all times because at night it cools down but long as you can stay from 97 to 103 you're going to be pretty good and you see my humidity right now is a little high so i'm going to close my vents off actually the humidity is just right if i was going to be on lockdown mode or say just right, it's saying 67, 65, 67. I just don't want to go much higher than that. But guys, I'll get back with y'all when they start hatching. I just wanted to show y'all I'm putting them in there. And I was not thinking right about what I was saying about adding eggs every day. Because once you go in lockdown mode, I couldn't be adding eggs every day with that humidity up that high. So basically, I'm going to be using this incubator as a hatcher and then my other incubator to put them in there and incubate them and let them turn until I get enough to fill it up again. Then I'll bring them out here and I'll hand turn these. Or if I ever... So I probably won't never need the second basket. The one basket's probably going to be enough. So I'll see y'all again in a few days. Well, guys, this is day 17. And we got some quails hatching in there. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 
and some of them jumped out of the basket. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I see 16 hatched in there, guys. Maybe some more hatched today, because day 17. It's actually a, a day early, so my temperature may have been running a little warm. I might can turn it down on the next batch track. We'll see what happens today and what my outcome is, percentage-wise. I'm shining the flashlight in there so y'all can see. But y'all can see on my thermometer, the, during lockdown, the max got up to 102, and the low was 96.6. .6. But I'm out here in this shed, and it gets hotter during the day, and We've been in the 50s at night. One night it was down to 48, and that's probably the night it got to that 96.6. All right, guys, that was a pretty good outcome. I hatched 23 quills out of them 35 eggs. And if I ain't mistaken, 16 of them hatched on day 17, and three of them hatched anywhere from the start of day 18, and I ain't sure when the other ones hatched if they was going to early part of day 19 or when it was because it hatched sometime through the night but anyway that is a very good outcome because them are the first eggs that i've collected this year since my quail started back laying so i wasn't sure how fertile they was going to be but that that's an awesome outcome so i hope you enjoyed this little video i hope this sparked some ideas in some of your heads on making you an incubator all the parts that I've used here other than the ice chest and the glass on the front door will be in the description below. There will be a, an Amazon affiliated link in the description below where you can go to and purchase everything that I've used here. If you like these little videos and you haven't never subscribed, please reach down there and hit that subscribe button. It don't cost you a thing. Give me a thumbs up. Like and share my videos on your social media. That's the best way you could help Papa grow his YouTube channel. And guys, as always, if you have any questions about this or building one of these, please feel free to ask in the comments and I will reply to you. Try to help you the best I can. As always, I hope y'all have a great day and a blessed week. God bless. See y'all next time.